And when it came to the building of the temple, then the whole people of God, rich and poor, from the greatest to the least, were called upon to give according to their ability. And that is how the rich and the poor are equal before God. Because uh, if I am a millionaire and I give uh, a, a thousand pounds to the gospel, uh, uh, someone else, uh, well, let, let's, let's put it like this. If I have 10,000 pounds for easy counting and I give 1,000 pounds to the Lord's work, that means I've given a tenth. Isn't that right? And if there's another person alongside me and they have only a thousand pounds and they give a hundred pounds, they have given a tenth. Now man says that the man who had ten thousand pounds and gave the thousand gave the most. That's what man says. He gave a thousand pounds. But God says the man who gave the hundred pounds from his thousand and the man who gave the thousand pounds from his ten thousand are both equal. Because they gave a tenth of what they had. So in that respect, we are all equal before God and we all have the same opportunity. You understand me? We all have the same opportunity. The Scriptures does tell us that we are supposed to put into the work of God each week according to our ability. But in between the giving and the breaking, there must be a blessing. Because if you haven't got the blessing, there is no release of life. That is why we need to pray for God to bless the harvest. Because whatever you plant is no good if God's blessing is not on it. If the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm are eating it away, then no matter what you put in the ground, it is still lost. Isn't that right? So the divine principle is these words of action he took. He took that which was given to him freely, wholeheartedly, unreservedly. When the boy let that out of his hands, it went out of weak hands and it went into strong hands. And you might not know how to make things multiply in your hand, but when you put them in God's hands, he begins the multiplication process by first of all blessing that which is given. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, the same is true of the Lord Jesus Christ in his broken body. You remember the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, that's the blessing, he broke it. And then he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Jesus the Christ, who was always in the bosom of the Father, took upon himself flesh. Isn't that right? Because he had to have an earthly part so that he partook of flesh, the same as we, and was tempted in all points like as we and yet without sin. So Jesus took a body. He took a body of flesh. And then he went down to Jordan and dedicated that body to the Lord for the purpose for which he was born. And when he went down to Jordan in his dedication, he was blessed because the Holy Ghost came down on him at Jordan. Isn't that right? And then what happened? He was broken on Calvary's tree. And what happened after he was broken? He said himself, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it is broken, and it brings forth much fruit. So you see, he took the natural body, committed it to the kingdom, and had it blessed at Jordan, then offered it up on Calvary, and it was broken, 
And glory to God, when Jesus Christ uh, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, he sent forth the Holy Ghost, uh, and that was the multiplication. Hallelujah. Have you got it? You see, God does not change from his divine principles. And whatever way you twist the word of God, you cannot change the results. God works according to his laws. So he took the bread and the fish. I suppose it is good to say at this stage that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. But in order for the bread to be distributed, it had to be broken. Doesn't the Word of God tell us that we should be men of God, eh, workmen that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the Word of truth? In other words, taking the Word of truth and breaking it and giving to God's people. God does not walk away from His principles. That's why Jesus had to die. Because God had decreed that without the shedding of blood there would be no remission of sin, so he had to work within his own laws. Look at it again. First verb, he took the bread. Then he blessed it. Now sometimes we sing the song, and it was quoted tonight, something like, take me, melt me, mold me. Fill me. That's just another way of saying the same thing. But God has got to bless your life before he can break your life. Because you cannot take the breaking without the blessing. But when you come to the Lord in your sin and in your sorrow, and he takes you, then he blesses you with the knowledge of sins forgiven. He blesses you with the consciousness that you've got the peace of God. He blesses you. When then after a while, you find he breaks you. Because I found when I committed my life to the Lord Jesus, he took me. And the witness in my heart that he had took me, that he had taken me, was wonderful. The witness that he had taken me was, 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 was wonderful to find that peace. I was blessed. But then, I was broken. Because when I went before God in prayer, I began to really see the kind of a person I had been. And it broke my heart. He broke me. He broke me. I wept before him many times. But when he broke me, then he distributed me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, this is a divine principle. And I owe the church that much to tell them what God tells me. So he took the bread and the fishes, he blessed them, and he broke them, and he gave. Now, the box of ointment of spikenard it had a beautiful fragrance. But it couldn't release the fragrance until it was broken. As long as the lady kept it in the box, there was no sweet aroma filling the room. But when she broke the seal of the box and opened the ointment and anointed Jesus for the burying, then the perfume of that broken ointment Filled the place. But it had to be broken. The corn of wheat has got to be broken before it can multiply. Now, God will not change his laws. The first thing he wants to do is take your life as you give it to him willingly. And as you give him your life willingly, then he wants to bless it. He'll give you the joy of the Lord as you sing with God's people in the meeting. He'll bless you as you listen to a solo or a duet or a choir or a music. He'll bless you as you listen to the word. You feel the joy, you feel the peace, you know, you feel good. But when God gets you feeling like that, then that's the beginning of the breaking process. Because right after that, then he put the challenge on you. 
He put the challenge on you to commit yourself more fully to the kingdom of God. He put the challenge on you to use your life to bless others. He put the challenge on you to come to the place where you can say, I'm not my own. I am bought with a price. I belong to God. Therefore, I will glorify God in my body and in my spirit, which are his. See, when God gets you happy and the sugar is on you, then he puts a challenge on you to go deeper. And if you stumble and you fall at that challenge, then your life becomes static and stagnant. But if you rise to meet that challenge, when God breaks you, glory to God, there's more sweetness from your life and more fragrance than there ever had been before. Amen. So he blessed it, then he break it, and then he gave it. If God, you want the blessing of the Lord in your life, don't you? Well, you can only get it as you are broken. Because the greatest blessing is to bless others. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And that means your money, it means your time, your talent, it means your houses, it means your cars, it means your energies, it means everything. So when you do give, he accepts it. And when he does accept it, he blesses it. And then when he blesses it, he breaks it. And if you can stand the breaking, then he distributes you to meet the need of other people. That's the highest blessing you can have to glorify God in meeting the needs of other people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when Jesus gave to the disciples, the disciples gave to the people. And as long as Jesus kept the loaves in his hand, they didn't grow. Because if they would have grown, he couldn't have held them, could he? I mean, food for 5,000 people. So the multiplication only took place as he gave. And the multiplication stopped when he stopped giving. As soon as he stopped handing out and the disciples didn't take any more, then there were no more miracles. He was still left with the loaves and the fishes that he had in the first place. But they took up of what remained, 12 baskets full. No doubt the boy was well satisfied. Because not only did he feed 5,000 people, but he got 12 baskets full in return. He was fed himself, and he saw a miracle, and he knew that he had been part of that miracle for his natural little coarse barley loaves had moved out of his impotent, limited hands and into the mainstream of God's miracle power and into the hand of omnipotence. So a few barley loaves and a few fishes became enough to feed the multitude. Hallelujah. Friends of Christianity would only wake up to the realization of this very truth that when we totally commit ourselves to God, the whole situation changes. As long as we are holding back, holding back, holding back, the anchor is on us. And we never reach the height of the dreams we would like to dream. And we never have the fulfillment of our great desires. But when we give ourselves without reservation, the natural water that we put into the water pots gets the blessing of God and it becomes miracle wine. Hallelujah. You do what you can do naturally, but you can never go to God and tell God, say, oh Lord, I've done the best I can. When deep in your heart you know you haven't done the best you can because God knows. You can tell it to man, but you can't bluff God. So it's a fool to try. You should never try to bluff or deceive God. Be honest with him. Give him yourself, and he will give you himself. He will take the natural that you've offered, 
and turn it into supernatural because he is the God of miracles. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Well, we're going to come to the table of the Lord, but remember that Jesus said the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, he took it, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he distributed it. How many of you looked in the mirror before coming to church tonight? Now, I want you to be honest with me. Come on. I looked in the mirror. Sure. Did all of you look in the mirror? You should look in the mirror to see it. you're tidy and going out correctly. Isn't that right? Well, when you looked in the mirror, how many faces did you see? One. Whose face was it? It was yours. How many faces did you see when you looked in the mirror? One. That's what, that's what I saw. When I looked in the mirror, I saw one face. I'm sure any of us who looked in the mirror, we get ourselves ready, we saw one face. Now, what would have happened if you would have smashed that mirror? Let me tell you, when you look in the mirror and you see one face, if you break the mirror into a thousand pieces, you have got a thousand images. Isn't that right? Because it takes the breaking to make the multiplication. Glory to God. When we are broken for God, then our image is multiplied. Amen. And so many people, they stumble and they fall at that because they don't want to be broken. They still want to do the wrong thing. They still want to go the wrong way. But when we are broken, glory to God, there is a multiplication. That is why God takes us, blesses us, breaks us. Because if we are not broken, there is no multiplication. If we are not broken, there is no di distribution. If we are not broken, the loaf, no matter how many of them you have on the table, they do nothing until they are broken. And the Christian is of no use to God until he is broken. That's why we should be broken. Because when we are broken, God distributes us. And as much as we are broken, the more we are broken, the more minute particles we are broken into, the more we are ground down, then thanks be unto God. Our image is multiplied, multiplied, multiplied. That's why some of the church leaders get upset because people get up and they say, Brother Chambers this, Brother Chambers that, Brother Chambers is the other thing, Brother Chambers is a real evangelist, he's a man of God, he's a prophet, he's this, he's that. Well, somebody's bound to say it because I have been broken. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm preaching it to you so that you will be broken. Because the more you are broken, the more you can be distributed. Glory to God, and the more pieces you are smashed into, the more people will be fed by your life. Glory to God. Just like the loaves and the fishes, there may not be much in your hands. And you may not think very much of your life. And you may say, I'm only a little Irish man from Ireland who doesn't know very much. And, and I did this and did that and did the other thing. Oh, what is this among so many? What is this among the needs of London or the needs of Birmingham or the needs of Bristol or the needs of of Africa or the needs of the world. Take it and put it in the hands of God and you'll see it's a great deal. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to end it there as we come to the table of the Lord. And when we take that bread and we break it, remember? He took it. He blessed it. He broke it. And he distributed it. The loaf is no good unless it is broken.
Let us divide our lives tonight to meet the needs of men and women. And let us press on through a little journey up and down the motorway or the missing of a meal or the giving up of some little thing that you wanted to have so you can put it in the kingdom or the time you wanted to do something else instead of doing something else for yourself do something for the Lord as you do it he'll bless it he'll break it he'll multiply it praise the Lord forever let us bow in the presence of the Lord.